So today I'm talking about being connected socially and what does it mean? How has it changed the way people interact, the way people do commerce, the way people do business, the way people uh, create relationships? How has it changed everything? Social media, social networking. We're going to talk about what it means to really connect and why there must be an emotional investment on your part if you want to build a network. That's coming up. is that I like to get personal development during net time. And net time is when you have no extra time. So if you're one of these people, you got a busy life, you got no extra time, then I recommend getting your personal development in when you're in the shower. Here I got my Bluetooth speaker, and you know, uh, look, I, I do Audible. You can see some of the titles. So I'm gonna put on, I think I'm gonna put on Jack Canfield today. Get some personal development in while I'm showering. And then we're going to get dressed and uh, head down to the river and do some walking. More to come. There's a big difference between uh, business and art. There's a big difference between commerce and creating art. So many of us artists want to monetize our art. But why do people pay high prices for art? Why do people spend, you know, millions of dollars on a Picasso or a Rembrandt? Why does anybody pay anything for art? I think ultimately, um, it's the inspiration you get when you see art. It's also um, the emotional investment that the artist puts into the work. The artist sacrifices. The artist broods over a subject, whether it's a sculptor or a painter or a songwriter. You brood over a certain subject and you connect people emotionally. But you can't connect them emotionally unless you are emotionally connected. And that's where the value in art is. You know, artists don't always win. I don't know how many songs I've tried to write that uh, just were bad, just were bad songs, never completed, or, or even the ones that were finished, they just, they didn't inspire people. It's interesting, if you look at anyone blowing up social media, why are they blowing it up? It's because they're making an emotional connection. They're connecting with people emotional. You watch any of the TV shows like American Idol, uh, which is now off the air, or whatever, America's Got Talent. People connect with the stories of these singers and these artists, these jugglers and these, whatever their art is, people connect with the, the, the story. And the story is what engrosses people, engages people, connects people, gets people inspired. People can relate to your story or people feel for you in your story. And that's a hard thing to monetize, but the world needs it, don't we? the turn of the century, uh, the Industrial Revolution, you look at uh, everything that was being manufactured, the focus and the goal was to manufacture it as inexpensively as possible. Uh, you look at someone like Henry Ford who uh, he automized the automobile building industry. He automated it. He automized it. Automized? Is that a word? He automated it. And what did he do? He figured out a way to make a better mousetrap faster, cheaper, more inexpensively. And that was a principle of profit, right? The reason for that was profitability. But somehow, I think we got caught into this cookie cutter process where we were taught in school especially to, uh, you know, uh, we're taught to learn to do things a specific way. And we're taught to actually appease the teacher and do things the way the teacher te tells us and stop using critical thinking. And I think that's where we've gone awry.
I just don't think we were born to fit into a cookie cutter process of education. I think that uh, we've lost our way in America with the public school system because, you know, we're so intent on just making the students become robots and we're not encouraging them to become artists or critical thinkers or risk takers. You know, uh, we, we teach them to become worker bees, to grow up with a job mentality and to play it safe. But it's interesting, the ones that are creating the opportunities are the ones that are taking the risks. The ones that are profiting are the ones that are inventing new ways to do things, inventing, making new inventions, making new appliances, making new ways, new systems. It's the visionaries. You look at a company like Apple, and what has Apple done? Well, besides being the most profitable company in the history of companies, uh, they innovated things. They inspired people, man. They just, they had a different way of thinking and they've, they've built such a loyal customer base that, you know, if you're gonna get a music player, you're not gonna go buy a Zune. <laughs> you're gonna get an iPod, if you get one uh, these days anyway, because it's all on your iPhone, right? focus and our goal is profitability. I feel like if our only focus is to be profitable, to offer something more and more inexpensively, then we're on our road to going as low as we can go. People are willing to pay for brilliance. People are willing to pay when they're inspired. And I think that's what Apple does. You know, you look at anyone who's tried to copy one of the Apple products, and all they're trying to do is imitate something and offer it cheaper. And there is a market for it, but where's the inspiration? And so getting back to talking about your social network, you're building a social network on inspiration. You're building a social network based on making people feel inspired, making people feel good, making people laugh, making people feel happy, making people feel connected. Sharing your story, being real, even when you're airing your laundry. And I don't think it's good to air all our laundry, but when you're being brutally honest, it goes a long way. People want the real. You know, we live in a fast food world and everybody's used to getting everything so instantaneously. This is why those slickly produced uh, videos don't work like they used to. Because everyone's used now to folks looking into a camera and being real. And all of us want that. All of us want the real. You know, we're tired of the imitation. We're tired of the lies. We're tired of all the bull crap that comes along with marketing. People just want stuff to be real, and I think people are willing to pay for quality. So this is why there are some people that are charging high prices for training, and other people that can't give away a $7 ebook. So I was talking about um, the emotional bandwidth that it takes, the emotional investment that it takes to make connections in 2016 uh, and, and, and beyond in the social media world that we live in. Um, you just won't move the needle if you're trying to automate everything. I've got a friend that went to all these third party companies and you know he has these beautiful graphs and charts made and he has all these, uh, he'll, he'll spend like a couple hours on Monday and and he'll post all these beautiful photos with inspirational quotes, and it helps. But it's really not a connection. If you go to his business wall, he's got no engagement. And the only real way to get people engaged anymore is to engage them. And so it requires an emotional investment, and I think that's kind of the X factor between uh, automation and driving prices down and making an investment that is gonna, you know, uh, really resonate with people uh, on an emotional level and be valuable in the marketplace and be something that you can monetize um, that's higher priced than all of the other crap out there. I think it really comes down to the human connection. Isn't that always the way? You look at the, the videos that go viral, think of the, uh, 
the mom that put on the, the Star Wars mask. She just connected with people. She just made people laugh. She uh, made people's day, and that's what made it go viral. It's always when you can connect with people on an emotional level. Sometimes you hear somebody's sad story, and that goes viral. Um, sometimes uh, you see something funny, and that goes viral. And so I think that you know we really need uh, to uh, be uplifting the artists, the troubadours, the songwriters, the painters, the sculptors, the, the actors, the singers, because art is what makes the world a more beautiful place. And those people that can show us, uh, reflect reality back to us, those people that take the time to brood over a subject and, and reflect it back to us in a meaning, meaningful way. And so this is what I love about uh, forward-thinking companies like Apple, forward-thinking companies that innovate instead of copying. There's too much copying going on in planet Earth. There's too much, uh, too many people trying to, to maintain the status quo or do something that's already been done. And we need the risk takers. We need to be risk takers. We need to take chances. We need to do things not just for the financial remuneration, but do things because they're the right thing to do. We need to do things just for the satisfaction and the fulfillment of doing something good, doing something uh, positive, doing something that uh, enhances people's lives. And so if you're a marketer or you're an entrepreneur, you, what you really are is an artist. And it's okay to take chances and fail. I've failed so many times. I've fallen on my face so many times, but I'll tell you what, the times that I've won, I've won really big. And I would never, I would never uh, change it. I would never go back and do things differently. I'm glad I became an entrepreneur. I never really connected with the fact that I was an entrepreneur when I was a musician. I thought, you know, I was so ridiculed as a teenager for growing my hair long and playing heavy metal. I didn't see value in it. I didn't realize that traveling and touring and playing music was all training and practice to be a business entrepreneur. Uh, entrepreneurs run the world, ladies and gentlemen. And we've got to get back to putting art into everything we do, putting our best and in, in, in our, our innovation into everything we do. And when we start doing that, uh, we're going to move the needle, not, not just financially, but we're going to move the needle in our own lives and in, in, in the lives of the people that we're touching with our, uh, with our business, with our media, with our art. That's my two cents anyway.